Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so my name is uh, Jen Singer, and I am from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Um, I am from the International Student Office, and you are here today because we're going to do an online session to provide information. All of you should be admitted to our computer science master's program. So we're going to do a session today that's focused on that. Um, we're going to start with some basic information for international students, but most of the session today will be focused specifically about our computer science program. We have with us today um, a professor of computer science, um, Dr. John Boyland, and we also have a current computer science master's student with us here today, Pranay, who will be able to talk to you about his experience as a student. Uh, so welcome today. Before we get started, I wanted to just start with a couple of little housekeeping things. And uh, first of all, if we could ask you, please, while you're uh, participating in the session to keep your cameras off and your microphones muted, um, it really makes for a much nicer experience for all the participants if we don't have to worry about bandwidth or background noise. So keep your cameras off and your microphones muted. We are gonna devote a, a large portion of today's session to answering questions. So if you have any questions along the way, we're requesting that you please put those into the chat box. Um, the Zoom platform has a chat function if you wanna put your questions in there. Uh, when we get to the end, we'll make sure that we devote time to answering all of those questions. Um, so use the chat box. Um, our engineering program um, is very eager to have you um, join us on campus and they have these amazing uh, engineering pens, right? It's a pen that you use to write with, but it has attached to it all sorts of really cool engineering tools. Um, and so as a reward for attending this session today, they'd like to make sure that you get one. In order to do that, we need to know exactly who's here. So if you could take a look at the name that's on your Zoom account, and if it's different from the name that you use to apply to UWM, if you could go ahead and change your Zoom name so that we can identify that you're here. We're gonna keep track of our participants today so that when you arrive on our campus in person, we know that you attended the session and then uh, engineering is gonna make sure that you get uh, one of these amazing engineering pens. So if you could go ahead and change the name on your Zoom account to the same name that you used to apply to UWM, that would be very, very helpful. Just a reminder to keep your cameras off and your microphones muted. If you have questions along the way, go ahead and put them in the chat box and we will make sure that we get those um, answered at the end of the session today. So just to give you a brief idea of what's going to happen in the session, I'm going to start with some really basic information about um, international student uh, information, right, um, arrivals and how to navigate the information you need. Um, then I'm going to pass it over to Dr. John Boyland, who's a professor in our computer science program, who will talk to you a little bit about the computer science program itself. And then finally, we have Pranay, who is a current computer science master's student. Uh, from India, who's going to tell you about his experience from the student perspective in our program. And then the rest of the time is going to be devoted just to answering your questions. Okay, so if you've got them along the way, put them into the chat. Okay, I want to start by, um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, oops. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and I am going to uh, share with you a website. Hopefully all of you have seen this by now, um, but I do want to share it with you. I'll put the direct link to it into the chat when I'm done speaking. This is the site that UWM has for our international students. Um, you'll see that the top is called IEEE Connects. IEEE stands for International Student Scholar Services. Many of you have received emails from IEEE at uwm.edu. This is the website that you'll use as an international student here at UWM. At the top right, you have the opportunity to log in. This is where you upload your documents to request your I-20, et cetera. But with this very first section, you can see on the left, there's this menu. The top one is newly admitted students. And if you go there, it's public facing. You don't need to log in to see it. And this is the information that we have out for our newly admitted students, including I'd like to highlight our next online session for admitted students is actually tomorrow at 9 a.m. So this session will not be focused on computer science. It'll be a general session for all of our international students. But if you're looking and you have questions about anything uh, that relates to getting to campus, please join us tomorrow. We would love to have you. If you go down on this website, we have a nice checklist for you. If you click on that, it uh, opens as a PDF. So in case you wanna print it and cross things off, 
But if you go down here to the bottom, you'll see there's these different categories. And if you click on them, they expand to provide more information. So I'm not gonna go through every detail of every section, but I wanna highlight just a couple of things. The first is the very important one, this tell us your plan. So as you are getting ready to come here this fall, we're about uh, you know, uh, within a couple of months of classes beginning. And so time is getting short. And I know a lot of you are in the visa application process and some of you might be getting nervous about whether or not you're gonna get your visa in time. So first of all, I wanna mention that classes begin September 6th. That is the first day of classes. You must be on our campus in person, ready to attend by that date, or it's too late for you to come. So if you're in the visa process and you're thinking you might get a late appointment or something like that, please keep that in mind. You cannot join us after the first date of classes. Uh, so if you can't join us, if you're delayed because of your visa or any other reason, um, you do have a couple of options. So if you come to this website, you can click on these and learn more of the details. Um, you have the opportunity to start online from home. So um, if you can't make it by the first day of classes, you can do the semester on home. Please note that that does not mean start online and come mid-semester. If you start online from home, it means that you're doing the entire fall semester from home and then joining us in January for the spring semester. Um, or you can defer your admission, meaning you can request that we change the, your admission status from this fall to potentially next spring or the following fall. And if you click on these buttons, you'll see more details about how that works. And then uh, there's a way that you can send us complete a form online that will let us know that that's what you're requesting. Um, if you defer your admission, we will um, process that and work with you to update not only your admission, but also your I-20 so that it has new start dates. Okay. Um, further down on this page, you'll find all sorts of other really good information, um, including recorded sessions for newly admitted students. Um, these are the sessions that we have done within the International Student Office, so they're the general sessions. We also have a really good one about housing um, that provides information about on-campus and off-campus housing. So if you're struggling right now looking for housing, that might be a good resource for you. Um, also in the prepare for arrival, one of the most common questions we're getting right now um, is about vaccinations. You'll find that information here. And then at the very bottom, arrival and transportation to campus. UWM does offer a service that we call Panther Pickup, where if you are flying into Chicago O'Hare, UWM will purchase and provide for you a ticket on a bus that goes once an hour from Chicago O'Hare to downtown Milwaukee. So we'll provide that ticket to you with instructions on how to find the bus. And then once you arrive in downtown Milwaukee, then it will be your responsibility to get to wherever it is that you're going. Um, so if you're flying into Chicago O'Hare, make sure you do this. You have to sign up. You need to provide your name and flight details and things um, in a form online. So make sure that you are doing that. Okay, um, so that's all I'm gonna talk about for this particular page. I will put the direct link to this page into the chat as soon as I'm done talking. Um, and then if you have any questions, please put them into the chat box, okay? Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to um, Dr. Boyland, who is a faculty member in our computer science program. Dr. Boyland. Uh, sorry. Trying to figure out how to unshare. <laughs> unshare. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Stop sharing. It was hidden. Okay, there we go. Dr. Boylan, I pass it over to you. Great. Very nice to uh, thank you very much, Lisa, uh, Jen. Uh, welcome, uh, all you students here, to UW Milwaukee in our um, computer science master's program, or some of you may be in the PhD program. Um, really glad that you are, are uh, on your way to come here. And I'm, I don't know the stuff about the international, about I-20s or things like that, but I'm the person you should come to if you have problems with signing up for classes or your advisor doesn't get back to you or you're not sure how to do anything with the program. I'm the person you should contact. You can uh, email me is the best way to reach me, boyland at uwm.edu. And so I'm your advocate. You know, you want to get into a class and, and you haven't heard anything or you can't figure out how to do something, I'm the person you should talk to. So um, I'm wearing my computer science, UWM computer science t-shirt here. Uh, usually when I teach, I'll be wearing a tie, so you get to see me nice and informally today. So um, we have a lot of students who are uh, interested about the difference between the regular master's program 
and the professional master's program. So the, these two master's program are, have very similar requirements. They're uh, slightly different. Um, the regular master's is usually for people who are gonna go on to get a PhD. They often do a thesis. Um, and uh, regular master students have a stricter requirement on their courses. They can't, they, all the courses need to be computer science courses and more of them need to be high level. Um, the uh, regular master's students are eligible for departmental aid and fee waivers and things like that. On the other hand, the professional master's students are people who are looking at getting professional um, skills in terms of computer science. And the, we also permit people to do up to nine credits of approved electives in different programs. Um, the, we also admit people who have less strong background in computer science, and then they can start taking some extra courses as part of their program usually. Some of the more uh, elementary ones are, need, are not part of your graduate program. Um, but the professional master's is basically a self-funded program. You will be paying for it yourself, you're eligible to have campus employment, and uh, uh, Pranay uh, will be able to tell you more about, he's one of the people who has a campus job while he's in the master's program here. Um, uh, people sometimes ask, okay, I'm admitted under one program, can I switch over to the other program? And yes, for the switching from the regular to the professional, you can do that anytime, just let me know and I'll connect you with Therese Query and you can fill out the forms and you'll be switched to the professional track. If you're in the professional track, we want you first to be able to demonstrate uh, that you're ready for the more advanced courses. So you need to have nine credits in advanced courses and they have to be at, uh, at an average of halfway between A and a B. So we want you, to, you need to be able to demonstrate that you're doing very well on that in order to transfer to the, um, the regular track. So those are the main difference in the tracks there. Um, uh, other, other things to talk to you about, there's something that's not really academic um, and it's completely optional, but at the end of the second week of class, um, uh, all the graduate students in our program and the professors invited over to my house for an informal sort of get together. There'll be plenty of food, um, things to drink, and uh, usually weather permitting will be outside. And my house is across the street from the university where you'll be taking your courses and meeting professors and things like that. So it can't be more convenient. Um, people park farther away from uh, than I live in order to go to the building. So people will park four blocks away and I'm just across the street. So um, we actually rent out our garage to a professor of computer science because uh, we're so convenient for that. So. Uh, I recommend you come to that. It's, it's, it's completely optional. It doesn't affect anything academically, but it is nice to meet other people and uh, uh, meet some people informally and get to know people in a more um, uh, friendly interaction. So um, other things, when you uh, are starting, if one of the first things you're gonna need to do is, and you can do this already right now, and some of you have already started, is working on your undergraduate requirements assessment. And so this is for people to make sure that they have the proper background to take graduate courses. And so the, this is a form where we did look at what you've taken as an undergrad and see if that matches with the courses we want people to have. And if it matches, good. And if it doesn't match, that's fine. You can, you can take the course here at UWM. In most cases, it can count towards your program here. And the, you want to do that now as opposed to waiting for a while because sometimes people have found they want to graduate and it turns out, oh, you never took you know, computer science 317 and now you're gonna have to delay your graduation. And for uh, many students, that's a big inconvenience and it can be very expensive too. So you wanna make sure that you filled out that form, you do that with, with your advisor you use, bring, use your informal transcripts from your undergraduate, and we figure out what courses you need to take. And then you can start looking at what courses you want to take in the fall. And unlike many programs, um, we don't have a list of courses given to you. 
you need to select your own courses that make sense. I mean, there are some courses that you'll be required because of your undergraduate uh, requirements, but other things you're gonna just, you have to decide what are you interested in? And you look at what courses are available and what courses you think you'll be ready to take. So on the one hand, um, you don't have them set for, for you. you, you know, you have to figure it out on your own. On the other hand, you get to choose the courses that are more interesting to you. So in the later part of the program, there'll be a chance of asking questions. I was just trying to talk about some of the main things here and want to welcome you again to uh, UWM. And I'd like to introduce our next speaker who is Pranay. He is a, a student, existing student in our master's program. He started here in the spring semester, which is January here in Milwaukee. And uh, so he can tell you about how one survives the cold here in uh, Milwaukee. So Pranay, are you ready to join on and give a brief introduction? Yes, thank you, Professor John Bolan. <laughs> so hello all. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all the audience members across the time zone. I'm really excited to be a part of this esteemed panel. So here, my role is in, in this panel is to give you the insights about what is the student's perspective on how UWM looks. So I know that it's actually a high time as days are approaching and taking the decision which college to finalize and it's one of the most nerve wracking thing. I totally get that because uh, I was there in that position. But for me personally, while uh, choosing Milwaukee, there were very specific reasons for me such as, uh, uh, Okay, fine. Uh, such as like a uh, uh, student to faculty ratio. So it's like uh, uh, it's one is to 25. So we have more uh, teachers attention as a student. So back in India, we don't have because uh, it, it's like around for one teacher, we have around 90 students. So it's very hard to get that uh, attention like I personally get here. So after that, uh, UWM has the reputation of being in R1 research listing, it means that you have a, a more option or uh, more options to do research with your favorite subject and uh, the professor who is dealing with those kind of subjects. And uh, lastly, I had a, a financial option or like uh, I was awarded with the Students Chancellor Award. So that is a kind of conditional scholarship, so which helps me to cover some portion of my fees. So here, in UWM, we have uh, classes like uh, mixed classes, like in uh, in person and online. For the first semester when I came in spring semester, so I had I have taken two in person classes and and one online class. So I personally don't prefer online class, but after coming to UWM, it actually changed that perspective because uh, now I'm actually more comfortable to take online class because. Uh, uh, how UWM deals with the online class, how and how the uh, checks and balances they have put in that uh, online class so that it can be provided as smooth as possible. So for me, I have taken 535, that is a design analysis course offered by Professor Christian Cheng, and she's an excellent professor. So I, I have taken that course as an online because there was no in-person chance. So as you know, for a computer science student, it's a very crucial subject, uh, design analysis. So I was a bit skeptical at the beginning. It's like, uh, uh, it's an online class, will it be okay? Or uh, I should have taken some other semester or something. But after attending the first day of the lecture itself, I was like, Damn, this is going to be something good and something big. Because the efforts that have been put for that online class, like uh, how professor is going, uh, doing all the things she can do uh, to make the class as lively as possible. So as a student, uh, my responsibility was to give my side of effort. So what we have, uh, I have done is uh, I have connected the class to a team and invited my roommates over and uh, like, we are trying to replicate that kind of class environment around us. So it's like uh, uh, giving a uh, professor is also putting their efforts and we have to put our efforts. So it's more about that going that extra mile to achieve things. So after that, uh, I want to share that share the story behind how I got this opportunity in this panel. So I had a subject uh, user intelligent interface offered by Professor Susan McCroy, and she's the head of the uh, department or chair of the department. Sorry. And uh, by the end of the semester, so in that subject we had a requirement we had to submit a project as a final assessment. 
So professor asked us to just show her the working prototype of the project, whatever we are proposing. So I formed a six member team with my roommates and friends. So Hari, Shubham, Anuya, Sharath and Soundarya. So we collectively decided to make a web application where upcoming international students can give the GRE, IELTS and CGPA. And my machine learning uh, model will give uh, spit out the 10 colleges which is suited for your profile like safe university and ambitious university. So for this project, we as a team didn't compromise anywhere. See, we don't want to just show our project in a local host or something. We wanted the project to be done. Means we want to deploy it in a real time by the project deadlines. So for like uh, for few, for uh, last six to seven days, library became our new home for our whole team. So in this whole team, we are like, uh, everyone was contributing some part of the, like everyone uh, giving the best efforts. So it's like uh, by the end, uh, we submitted the project and we actually uh, submitted uh, the whole, we deployed the whole thing and we gave that project uh, to professors. So she was impressed and after a few days, she invited me in this panel. So like, uh, okay, fine, you worked in this project. So I guess you will be better suited to give your perspective how UWM is. So it's like, uh, it's giving, it's about giving 110%, like, uh, uh, going that extra mile as i said earlier so i personally believe that uwm has that kind of platform to support whatever adventure you want to pursue uh in your journey so it's like uh, i had so many memorable moments so after that uh, i got into part time so i i was like thought i was uh, uh as i said we have we can apply for jobs in handshakes and all but for me i've got jobs through a, a newsletter. So it's a, new, a weekly newsletter you get in your uh, uh, UWM email address. So in that, at the last section, it was mentioned uh, uh, in Dean's office, there is an opening position. So I mailed them and they responded and we had entry. So I was fortunate enough, I got the job. So for now, I have my personal office and I have an option between choosing work from home or coming to office and do work there. So uh, it has their own perks and benefits and all. So after that, uh, it, it, it's all about like uh, grabbing those opportunities. It's not like uh, uh, they will give it to you or something, but the opportunities will be there. So you, it's your responsibility to go and get that opportunity and secure for yourself. So apart from academics, uh, the city of Milwaukee, it's actually, uh, it's actually, uh, it, 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 you, will, you will enjoy the city. It's not like a overfilled, but it's like, a, uh, me coming from India, I had a very different perspective because uh, uh, there are less people here, but uh, you will enjoy this environment. And recently we had a, a 4th of July event. So it was very beautiful. We, uh, uh, me and my friends went to Veteran Park to actually see the fireworks. Back in India, we used to see it in news, like uh, uh, fireworks happening in USA, but uh, uh, experiencing with the in first hand, it was really good. And uh, after that, uh, as an international student, one of the biggest worry would be uh, getting housing and uh, uh, how the food will be. So for me, uh, housing, I was fortunate enough. Uh, I got uh, contacts from groups and all. I guess you are all being part in this WhatsApp group or some other Telegram group or something. So I got in touch with my senior and uh, I got that uh, uh, housing option as early as possible because uh, that is the one, uh, if you secure your housing, you you will be in peace, like, okay, fine. Now I can work on different things. So, so after that, uh, another biggest worry was like, uh, how the food will be. So will I be adjusted? Because uh, I, uh, back in India, I have a very different cuisine because I, I was born in Chennai. So there we have a different kind of food and I moved to New Delhi. There is a different kind of food. And after that, I studied in different places like Andhra and Bangalore. So we have a different food over there. So I was worried like, uh, uh, will I be adjusted over here? Because uh, I had a very different uh, uh, platter of food there. So when I came here in Milwaukee, uh, you don't believe me, I didn't miss that much of food. Like uh, if I needed Indian food, I can uh, go across the street and get the Indian food. So if, like, uh, if I want to get Chinese food or something, I have a Chinese restaurant across the street. So it's like, uh, uh, you won't uh, miss out that much. So I hope uh, uh, for the upcoming students uh, coming for fall, so 
you, I can uh, assure you that you will enjoy the city and you will enjoy the UWM culture itself. So it's mm-hmm. uh, like uh, it's whole run by students. So you will definitely enjoy. So I hope uh, I will uh, meet you in person uh, as much as possible. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. So if I miss anything, just let me in, know in the uh, FAQ session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really appreciate the students' perspective um, of Thanks. being a, at UWM. That's wonderful. Um, you, okay, so that's the, kind of the end of our prepared marks. We are reserving the rest of the session to answer your questions. Um, so if you have any questions you'd like any of us to address, um, please put them into the chat. Um, in the meantime, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, a couple of reminders. Um, if you could please go to your Zoom account and take a look at the name that is showing up for you on your screen. Um, and if you could change that to the name that you used when you applied to UWM so that we can uh, take note that you are here. Um, our engineering program has these really amazing engineering pens. It's a pen with engineering tools attached to it. And they'd really like to make sure you get one as a reward for attending the session. But in order to do that, we need to know that you're here. So if you could change your name to the name on your application, that way we can keep track of who's attending the session and make sure we connect with you and get you that gift when you arrive on our campus. Um, as we go through the Q&A section, if we could um, please uh, just again remind you to keep your cameras off and your microphones muted. It makes a much nicer experience for everyone. But go ahead and put your questions in chat and we will make sure that we answer them. <clears throat> so I know that we have at least a few questions uh, in our chat so far. Uh, so let me um, start with those. Our very first question of the day was about the documents that need to be submitted after arriving to UWM and when to submit them. So there's a couple of different things here uh, that are important for you. Um, and so the first is uh, related, all the stuff related to your admission to UWM and your visa status. So first of all, when you arrive in the US, you should go to that website that I sent you, that IS Connect site, log into it, and you'll see that there's an opportunity for you to click on something that is about arrival and check-in. Um, so there's a process that you're gonna need to follow. You can only do it after you've arrived in the US. So wait until you get here um, and then within a couple of days do that. So part of that process is going to include um, uploading pictures of your documents. So um, you're gonna have your I-20, your visa stamp, and then you're gonna have what's called an I-94, which is the document that officially shows that you entered the US in your F-1 uh, visa status. We'll give you instructions on how to find all of these things, so don't worry. Um, but you're gonna log into that IS Connect and you are going to um, complete that arrival check-in process. You'll have an online virtual meeting with someone from the International Student Office to go through your documents, make sure everything looks in order, um, answer any questions that you have, help you with any next steps that you need to do um, and, and give you directions on anything that you're missing at that point. Um, all of you uh, for were in, uh, if you remember when you applied to UWM, our application system allowed you to upload your transcripts directly into the application. So by default, because you uploaded copies of them, they were all considered unofficial copies. So all of you were admitted on the condition that you provide your original final transcripts to us upon arrival to campus. So that's one of the things you'll need to take care of um, as part of that arrival check-in process. The person from the International Student Office will go over this requirement with you but essentially you'll need to bring your hard copy final transcript to the International Student Office. We can take a scan of it so you can keep the original, but we need to physically see the transcript um, documenting that you in fact completed your previous degree before coming to UWM. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and then the, uh, the other thing that you're gonna make sure that you need to submit um, that you can start working on now is that you're going to need to work with the computer science program to submit that form that compares you the coursework you took as an undergraduate and um, make sure that they are satisfied with the requirements um, to make sure that you're taking the right classes moving forward. This is the form that Dr. Boyland referred to earlier um, and uh, you want to make sure that that is done upon your arrival at UWM so that you're not discovering later that it, it wasn't taken care of. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Dr. Boyland, we have someone who's asking for um, a, a, a more explanation about the differences between the regular and professional track. So which one is that in particular? Let's see. Um, the person talking about taking the computer studies 751? Um, that is, I think, related to the same question. Um, there's actually just towards the very top of the questions, just a, it literally just says, can you once more explain about the difference between the regular and professional track? OK, this is also on the, there's a FEQ list for this, but they, I don't, let's see. Um, the regular track is for people who are considering going on for the PhD afterwards. It has uh, it's more stringent admission requirements, and it has a, it requires you take all your courses in computer science, and they more of them need to be at 700 level. The professional track allows you to do nine credits, which are not computer science, and it also has uh, lower requirements for admission. You don't have to have a computer science degree coming in. Um, and it also uh, doesn't require quite so many credits at the 700 level. Those are sort of the academic differences between the two tracks. Great, thank you. Someone also asked, what is the total number of credits that needs to be required to complete the master's? That would be 31 credits. Okay. Um, and then while you're on, we have another question um, that would be best addressed by you. It says, I've been advised to take the Computer Science 317 this summer, but unfortunately was unable to enroll on time. What other options might I have? Um, and does UWM consider uh, MOOCs like Coursera certificates from other accredited universities? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, 317 is one of the few courses on undergraduate requirements that you cannot get credit for for your program. And so uh, getting it done through the somewhere else is actually beneficial. What you should do is talk to Professor Christine Cheng, um, and Lisa will put her email ccheng at uwm.edu. She is teaching 317 this fall. And especially if students already have some background in the material, uh, what we often recommend is that you ask permission to audit the course, where you don't have to pay for it, but you do all the exams. And as long as you get 70% on the exams, then you can have the requirement waived. That might be the best approach if you or if you have a MOOCs and we can't consider it as academic credit. Um, uh, Professor Cheng would know exactly how, how to do that. And then she would write to your advisor and say, hey, this person has met the requirement or this person will be auditing in that way. Great, thank you. We have, um, you get to stay on for a minute. We've got a couple more for you here. Um, so we've got one here um, and I wanna emphasize that this person is um, wishing to shift from the, um, from the uh, professional track to the regular track, uh, but then has questions about um, a course. So I'm a professional track level two student with a CS351 deficiency. Dr. Boylan previously mentioned that com uh, computer science 751 would cover that and would also award credits. I wish to shift to the regular track. Can I take computer science 751 in the first semester itself? Yes, that's computer studies 751, which is oh, very sorry. confusing. No, no, sorry, no. Sorry, no, sorry. Yeah. No, yes, just, just to, um, it's not technically a computer science course, but computer studies 751 counts towards the regular masters also. And it also counts as an advanced course for that purpose. So. As I said, you need nine credits of advanced courses and computer studies 751 would be an excellent course for that purpose. Not only does it satisfy the undergraduate requirement, but it also satisfies one of the nine credits towards the advanced credits you need to get transferred to the regular track. Great. Um, is the program of study form mandatory before enrolling for fall 22 classes? And if so, how to, how to fill in the form for future classes? Yeah, also a very good question. We have two forms. There's the undergraduate requirements assessment, and that one is basically mandatory uh, for your first semester. Um, but the program of study you should do uh, in your second semester usually. And that's after you have a sense of what you're going to do. And then the question is, how do you 
when your program is studied, you're saying what you're going to take in fall 2023. And we haven't even created the schedule for that. You just put in what you would like to take and hope to take for those later courses. So it's looking forward to, to what would your plans be for doing the program of study. But no, the program of study is not mandatory before um, your first or even your second semester. Uh, great. So we have a student who's listed out um, several different, I think, five different classes. Um, I'm taking these classes in my undergraduate requirement. Can they be used to meet the credit requirement of the master's program? Of the courses mentioned there, all but 317 can count towards the master's. And uh, computer studies 750 can count towards the professional master's, but does not count towards the regular master's. For 751, 535, and 537, they will all count to both tracks of the master's. Great. Okay, we have a question about how the online class works. Um, for example, um, Computer Studies 751 has an online section um, from when Monday and Wednesday from 9 30 to 1030. Does this mean you need to attend the virtual class at that time frame? What if I have a full-time job and cannot attend the virtual class in the daytime? Is there any work around? Um, good question. Um, I'm a little nervous because I'm pretty, I'm teaching that course and I thought it was Tuesday, Thursday, but maybe it is Monday, Wednesday. So I'll need to check my schedule to make sure that, uh, get my, I haven't quite made the syllabus for the semester, so I will find out. Um, uh, Computer Studies 751, as you said, has synchronous online, which means you're expected to show up to the uh, class in lecture, basically, the lecture is broadcast on Zoom and I have a TA who is there answering questions. This is very specific to thus this course, my course. So if you were asking about some other course, I would have no idea, but this is the course I teach, so I am able to say what that is. This course also says that um, you are not technically required to show up for these um, uh, synchronous sessions, except on the first day of class, and during both days in the midterm week. But that is unusual. Most online courses would require you to attend. Um, if you don't attend, uh, you will miss out on quite a bit, um, but uh, you need to work it out with the instructor and that would be me. So you would talk with me about that. So, um, but no, technically this it does not require you to attend except for the first day and during the midterm. At other times you probably want to attend, but talk with me. In, um, in a smaller setting. Great, thank you. Is a graduate seminar mandatory for professional track students? And if yes, give a brief about it. Yes, it is mandatory. Um, uh, the current catalog calls it Computer Science 700. That course no longer exists. It is now EAS 701. This is a, a, a mandatory seminar class about doing graduate work in, um, and it's the same class used by all engineering students. Um, this class is very useful for you preparing for um, your graduate studies. It tells you about how to handle American standards of plagiarism and things like that, which is very important because otherwise you can get into trouble that you weren't expecting. Um, we recommend you take this as, um, as early and feasible your first or second semester if you can, but it, it um, just needs to be taken before you graduate and both tracks require uh, EAS 701. Great, thank you. Um, for this fall term, there aren't enough graduate courses available to register. Most of the classes are already full. Can you suggest any way to register into courses? Yes, that is a very good question. Um, I apologize for this. We've had a uh, real growth and uh, we weren't expecting quite so many people to show up. Um, so uh, our chair has been looking at adding more sections and also increasing the size of sections. So what you need to do is contact the instructor if an instructor is given. And if there is no instructor given, contact the chair, Professor Susan McCroy, and say you're really interested in taking, you know, whatever course it is, and uh, could there space be made available? And sometimes it's possible to increase the section size. So um, contact me if you don't get any help with either of those things, and I can try to work with you. We'll see what we can do. Great. Um, all right, we've got one more question for you, and then I will take over for just a bit. Um, this is, are there any mandatory core courses that are required to be taken in any specific semester? That is a good question. Um, our program is pretty open. Um, the one thing is that 
almost all students need to take computer science 535, which historically has off been offered only in the spring semester. So um, it's not like you have to take it in your first year or second year. It's just that it, uh, the course tends to be offered only in the spring semester. So just keep that in mind. And I'll be back with some more questions. Yes, don't get too comfortable because I'm sure we'll have you back. Um, thank you to everyone that's submitting these just fantastic questions. Really appreciate this discussion. Discussion. Um, I'm going to address a couple of the questions here before I do. Just a reminder, if you haven't done it already, please take a look at the name on your Zoom account and change it to the name that you applied to WMS so that we can keep track of who's here uh, and keep these questions coming. They're fantastic. So I'm going to take a couple of them. The first is um, to please explain a little bit more about campus uh, on campus jobs. So first of all, let me um, just address that if you're coming to UWM on an F1 student visa, you do have some restrictions on employment. So you are allowed to work on campus up to 20 hours per week. Um, you're not allowed to work off campus without special permission. Uh, during the semester, it's 20 hours a week. And then in the summertime, as long as you are eligible to enroll in the fall, you're allowed to work on campus in the summer full time. Again, not allowed to work off campus without special permission. Um, there are lots of jobs available on our campus um, for our international students that are looking for on campus work. They're typically able to find something, um, but it really can vary in what uh, is available. Um, so Pranay, our student who joined us today, he was able to get an on campus job that was working in uh, the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences in the Dean's office. And so he is doing some kind of daily administrative tasks that help the college function. Uh, but he is doing things that are related to um, engineering and applied sciences. Um, there are all sorts of opportunities on our campus. Um, some students will do things like that, work in an office. Um, other students might work in the library. Uh, we might have students that are working in on-campus you know, restaurants or housing facilities, or there's just all sorts of opportunities. So it really depends on what you're interested in doing. Um, if you are able to secure something like an assistantship or some other kind of financial support, keep in mind that that is employment. Um, so if you have some kind of support like that, that does count towards your minimum allowed time on campus to work. So again, 20 hours per week when classes are in session, uh, full time over the summer, uh, but on campus only. There are a couple of other work opportunities that you may be a little bit familiar with that I'm going to just give you the briefest of information on. Um, the first is called Curricular Practical Training, also known as CPT, uh, uh, which is a benefit of the F-1 visa status. Um, so as an F-1 student, you have the possibility of getting CPT permission, which gives you permission to work off campus. It's typically um, related to taking like an internship, something like that. When you come to UWM, you'll complete an orientation program for new F1 students that will give you all the details on CPT. Um, just keep in mind that it's not guaranteed. You do have to apply for it and you do have to get permission before you can start working. So if you do get, um, you know, an opportunity to do some really fantastic internship or something, make sure that you're checking in with the International Student Office to verify how you can make that happen, how you can get the permission so that you can do it and still maintain your visa status. The U.S. government takes employment very, very seriously. And um, the if you work and you don't have permission, it's really fast way to lose your visa status and, and have to leave the U.S. So make sure that you're um, taking care of that and getting the permission that you need. Also, keep in mind that you're not going to be eligible for CPT until you've been at UWM in valid F1 status for one academic year. So if you're starting this fall, the first time that you would be eligible to even consider CPT would be the following May, right? So after the fall and the spring semesters. The other um, work opportunity that a lot of our F1 students take advantage of is optional practical training, um, also called OPT. It's a similar thing to what we were talking about, but it's designed typically for after you've graduated. So you graduate with your degree, it gives you the opportunity to get 12 months of work permission in the US. And then if your degree is STEM designated, which it is for all of you in computer science, um, after one year, you'll have the possibility of extending it for an additional two years. So three years of work permission after you graduate. Again, complicated, lots of rules. Pay attention to the information provided by the International Student Office and they will help you through that process, okay? 
UWM uses a system on our campus, a, a program called Handshake. That's a software that allows campus jobs to be posted. So if you're looking for on-campus work, I would recommend going to the UWM website, search the word Handshake, um, and it will take you to the database that you can log into to find potential on-campus opportunities. Keep in mind that not everything is listed in there. Sometimes you can identify things through connections or word of mouth or you know just asking around of other opportunities. Um, but Handshake is a really great place to start. Okay, um, someone asked a question, can we audit any course for free? Um, auditing is actually a pretty complicated process on our campus um, and you can't just audit whatever you want. There's all sorts of rules in place about how full the class is and, and all sorts of different things. And so what I would recommend is you go to the UWM website and just search for the word audit class and you'll find information about what that means and, and what it looks like. Um, but keep in mind that even if you do audit a class, it would be for your own personal knowledge and it's not going to count towards um, any degree requirement. So you can't audit a class and then expect it to uh, re you know, fulfill a requirement that you need in order to graduate. Uh, we have a question about, uh, can we choose the number of credits as per our wish for every semester? Uh, yes, uh, within some limits, um, you get to choose the number of classes that you want to sign up for. Of course, the more classes you take, the faster you know you can complete the requirements. However, it's important to remember a couple of things. First of all, as an F1 visa holder, you are required to be enrolled full time. So as a graduate student, you must have at least eight credits. Now, most of the credit, most of the classes in your program are three credit classes, so which means most of you will have a minimum of three different classes or, or nine credits, um, but you are allowed to, to go more than that. What I will caution you, though, is to be careful um, because at the graduate level, um, these classes are very, very difficult and intense, and having too many classes can really challenge your ability to be successful. Uh, there is a limit to the number of classes that you can take. Um, there is a point when they won't allow you to enroll in more, but I really would highly recommend, and I don't know if Dr. Boylan has any opinion on this, but um, nine credits um, or 12 at the absolute most in your first semester would be recommended. Uh, you need to get here and, and become comfortable with the American education system before you start overloading yourself because uh, in order to be successful, you really need to be able to have the time. Um, we see, unfortunately, yeah, I, a lot of students will, will make the mistake of, of thinking, I'm gonna get out of here as fast as I can and then it's too much and they're un, unable to be successful in all of their classes and it affects their experience and it affects their GPA and it affects their ability to assimilate to the community. If, you know, it affects their ability to make connections which we're gonna lead to the you know, internship and post-graduation job opportunities. And so um, don't go crazy your first semester, have nine to 12 credits at most. Um, and just make sure that you have at least eight because that's required by your visa status. And Dr. Boylan, I heard you agreed with what I said. Yeah, that's right. In fact, um, uh, 10 credits makes sense if you do the three courses plus that one credit of the graduate seminar. 12 credits, um, uh, I would be a little worried about that. It is possible to do that, but uh, if you're trying to go through fast, I recommend 10 your first semester, then 12 your second semester is the way to do it. Because if you start getting bad grades, then that's going to that you may get kicked out of the program and everything will be lost. It's just not worth it. Agreed, wonderful. Okay, um, so it looks like um, the next couple of questions I think that we have already addressed. Uh, let's see. Uh, it looks like we have one here, Dr. Boyland. EAS 701 is effective academic writing and EAS 702 is preparing future engineering faculty and professionals. Which one do we have to take? The people in professional track take the uh, EAS 701, which is the one credit. People who are in the thesis track of the regular, uh, doing the thesis in the regular track need to take both of them. Okay. Um, we, got, we have continued questions here about how to get into classes that are closed. Um, we've got specifically, I'm interested in computer science 790 cloud computing. 
and they're asking for a recommendation on who they could contact. Yes, for any course that doesn't give the instructor, you contact the chair, Professor Susan McRoy, and uh, Lisa McGovern has put the, the uh, email, her email in there, McCroy, UWM, EDU. Um, she's in charge of all courses that don't have a, um, don't have an instructor yet. I want to go ahead and jump ahead to his, uh, one, another question on the same topic saying, is this gonna be every semester that everything gets full all the time? Um, this is the first time I've noticed that everything was full so quickly. Um, it is a combination of, of great interest and also that we have a low point in the number of uh, uh, professors right now. We're in the process of hiring one professor right now and we have permission to start hiring another professor. So we're hoping that this will, this tight spot this fall will not be repeating every single semester. And also, as I said, you need to contact the instructor, um, uh, contact the chair. If they don't get back to you, contact me because we want to make sure you're able to get at least some course that makes sense for your program. You may not be able to get the most exciting data science course, you know, one that everyone wants to take, but you should be able to get a course that makes sense for your program. Great, thank you. Um, can non-IT students apply for a TA? I don't think so. Um, they can apply sometimes to be a, a grader. So that would be uh, contacting the chair to say, hey, you'd be interested in grading. Uh, we usually only want students who, um, who have had experience in the courses of grading though. So it's not good to have someone grading the papers who doesn't actually know the, the material well, so. Great. Um, do they need a grade of B in order to pass a graduate course? Um, you might be able to answer that, but I know you don't need a grade of B. I think it's a C minus, is it, Jen? Would you know? Yeah, the, I think um, C minus is, is considered um, passing um, for a course. Uh, however, in order to remain in good standing as a graduate student, you need to have an overall GPA of a 3.0, which is an average of a B. So you can have a poorer grade in one class, but overall you need to have an average grade of a 3.0 GPA, which is equivalent to a B. Yes. So if you're getting a C, you need an A to balance that in order to keep in good standing in the program. And you don't want to be, you, if you're getting B minuses and Cs, it's not looking good. Yep. Um, okay, I'm going to take a couple of questions here and then Pranay get ready because we've got a question um, for you coming up next. Um, someone asked a question about any medical requirements coming to UWM. So UWM itself does not require that students have any proof of particular vaccinations or anything like that. Um, that being said, there are a couple of sort of exceptions and then, and then another big exception. Um, so generally speaking, we don't have any requirements, except if you're gonna live on campus. So if you're living um, on our campus, our, some of our graduate students choose to live, uh, we have a facility called Kenilworth and Kenilworth is on campus housing and they will require that you have proof of particular immunizations. If you're living on campus, you need to have a signed contract with Kenilworth and in the contract, it will specify exactly which um, requirements um, are needed for that. Otherwise, you're not required to provide anything to us. We do recommend that you bring with you um, your medical history uh, documents so that in case there's an emergency, you've got those here with you. But we're not going to make you show us anything. Um, that said, as we you know continue to learn how to live in our post-COVID world, um, there is the opportunity, um, or there has been the opportunity, right, for students and faculty and staff to provide information to the campus about um, being immunized. So you want to potentially have those records with you. Um, so you can provide that if needed. Um, and then the big thing, and this is really important, this is not a UWM requirement, um, but the U.S. federal government does require that you be vaccinated against COVID-19 in order to enter the U.S. And so um, what I would do is contact your airlines. They probably, they, I know that they have information on their website with clear information about what that requirement looks like, um, but they're not even going to let you on the plane to come here if you can't provide documentation that you are immunized. And if you haven't started your immunization process, I would recommend you check into that immediately because many of the vaccines require two different doses that have to be timed out apart. And so uh, time is getting short. So if you haven't 
started that process, I would recommend you start doing that immediately to make sure you have time to get both, not only both doses in, but then there has to be a particular amount of time after the second dose in order to be considered fully immunized. So check with the airline that you would potentially be flying to the US with. Um, they have this information on their website. You can also look um, the universe. Uh, United States uh, CDC um, has a website that gives the information about those requirements. Okay. Um, and then there was one other question that I wanted to answer um, quickly um, is, uh, and that is um, about a co-op option. So students are asking if we have a co-op U UWM does not have an organized co-op, um, so there is not going to be any organized guarantee placement and into any kind of internship experience. Um, however, that being said, most of our faculty have really amazing connections to industry in the community. And so most of our students that are interested in having those experiences can find them. Um, so there's a lot of good opportunities there, but we don't have an organized co-op. Um, Pranay, I'm delighted to say that we have a question for you, if you would mind coming back and talk about get what it's like getting around in the uh, community of Milwaukee. What is public transport like? Um, and is the commute to the university convenient? Thank you so much, Leah, I got the question in this session. So uh, that's a great question. Before coming to Milwaukee, I had the same question like, uh, uh, will the transportation system will be there to reach the uh, university or any other place? But uh, it, I'm very fortunate to tell that uh, uh, in UWM, we, ha we will be provided with the bus pass. So here we have like a bus system and it's actually well connected. So to actually use this uh, bus system, like how to go from your place and to the university, we have a, a, a Google Maps in that we have a specific section called b bus transport. So in that just uh, enter the, uh, destination and the uh, point of where you're starting from. And it will show you the list of buses and uh, what are the possible routes. So how can you reach your university or any other destination? So I didn't understand the value of the bus first until unless uh, when the summer vacation start, I didn't enroll for any summer classes. So they said the bus pass will stop. Uh, then I was like, okay, fine. Let's see how much actually the pass will cost. So for my surprise, I got to know it was for every month, we have to pay around $75. So that is the actual kind of money you're saving up for your transport. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, stay on, uh, Pranay, we've yeah. got a couple more questions for you. Um, someone yeah. is asking about um, yeah. how you balance your class studies with working yeah. on campus. Actually, that's a really great question. So as Jen mentioned earlier, for our, as an international student, we have a uh, per week 20 hours work requirement. So uh, what I did was uh, I used to work like a six hour shift every day. So it's like whenever I don't have any class, I used to go for work and try to cover my six hour schedule or seven hour schedule. So seven, seven, 14 hours and last six hours I used to put. So, after that, uh, actually, you have to uh, make sure that uh, you are allocating sufficient time for your academics also. Because for first semester itself, uh, I took 535 course uh, in design analysis. It's actually, it requires a uh, uh, lot of time. Uh, you have to put a uh, lot of efforts into that. So for me, uh, whenever my part time is over, when I come home, eat, and my roommates and friends are ready to uh, dwell into the assignment of 535. So, I'm, for me, I have personally found that balance means a uh, time management thing. So uh, where you fit all the schedule, like uh, it's not like only about studies or something. You, you can do other kind of activities. So I would highly recommend it's all about how do you manage the time. So for me, I used to write a schedule uh, and uh, it's like try to stick on to it. And every morning if I get up, I write just top five things, what I need to achieve in that day. And by the end of the day, I will try to make sure to complete all those things. So at the end, uh, it boils down to how good you are uh, at managing the time. Great, thank you. While you're on, we've got one more question for you. Are there any good Indian restaurants around UWM? 
<laughs> actually there, uh, there is a uh, one good restaurant i would recommend that is uh, uh, maharaja place uh, uh, they offer buffet system and other kind of uh, uh, general meals also so we have plenty of uh, indian uh, restaurant options just in google you can search what are the indian restaurants in yemen you will get a plenty of them and they are actually very good so uh, i thought uh, i'll miss most of my indian food like uh, uh samosa and pine puri this kind of favorite food but uh, after coming here i i didn't f- uh, find that kind of difference i like uh, when i'm when i'm craving for those kind of food i just search nearby places and go there and get those things so yeah nothing to worry about that great thank you so much uh then before i leave i got one direct question i guess i can address oh, that yeah um, please do so uh someone said I heard that cab services is all free all over the Milwaukee with our Panther student ID is it true uh, actually uh, it's it's not uh, we have a cab service but it's like that is provided by our campus so we call it as a boss be on a safe side so we have a timing for summer we have like a 7 to 12 and for fall and spring semester we have a different timing like it starts from evening 6 o'clock and ends at uh, late night 2 a.m. so uh, those cab services are provided by uwm and you have a very uh, specific cab we call it as a type type ride app so you have to log into that app and uh, you can book in that app only it's not like you book uber and you showed your uwm card and it's waved up it's not like that so if you have a very specific app you have to log into that and you have to order cab from that it's not like every cab is free for uwm students i hope i cleared that thing. Yeah, that's the only thing. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Um, I'm going to address one final question, and I think that's going to bring us to the end of our session today. Someone asked about tuition and fees for fall 22. Um, I just put a link into the chat that takes you to the UWM website. Uh, we have a site called One Stop Shop that's, that provides you with all of the general information you need about the university. So that's the page that shows you the, the information about tuition and fees. One of the things that's interesting about UWM is that we are part of a state system. Um, and so we are uh, bound by some rules that are set by our system. And one of those um, interesting rules is that they don't finalize our tuition amounts until close to when the semester begins. So you'll see that page, um, the last tuition amounts that are listed are for summer of 22, fall 22 is not listed yet. Um, that's because they have not been formally announced. As soon as they are, that page will be updated with the fall amounts. But you can imagine, you can assume that they're going to be very, very similar to the spring amounts or the or the summer amounts. So you can take a look at those previous terms to get a sense of what it's going to be. The tuition modeling at UWM is kind of confusing, and a lot of other places in the world, when you sign up for a program like a master's in computer science, there's one fee that you pay. So you go in knowing exactly what it's going to cost. The U.S. education system doesn't work that way and it depends on what you sign up for. So when you go into the tuition and fee information, you'll see that there's a table for graduate level classes. Um you're going to pay both a tuition amount and what's called the segregated fees. Um and it depends on the number of credits that you sign up for. Uh and there's what we have we have what's called a plateau that means once you reach a certain number, uh the cost remains the same. um and it goes up and uh to make it even more complicated it's not the same amount of of money per credit so if you look at if you're signing up for just one course for example uh the amount of the money that you pay per credit is actually higher than the amount that you pay per credit if you're registering for say nine classes um and so you really need to t- to reference that chart so you'll be paying the tuition again as an f1 student you need to have at least eight credits um and so you can uh, that can help guide you with an expectation of cost plus you're also going to be paying the segregated fee that you'll also find on the chart the segregated fee is the fee that pays for all of the extras that you get as a student while you're here access to our um athletic facility all sorts of activities that kind of thing Um and then some classes also have additional fees. So when you go to register for classes in the online catalog, 
when you look at the class, if there's an additional fee specific for that class, it'll be listed there as well. Um, that is why it's really challenging um, to tell students exactly what it's going to cost because there are so many different factors. Don't forget, in addition to that, as an F1 student, you're also required to have health insurance. And so that will be automatically billed to you in your pause account when you register for classes. Okay, um, I think we've covered an enormous amount of information today and we're at the end of our time. And so um, in order to be thoughtful about everyone's schedules, I'm gonna end this session. Um, so I wanna thank everyone for coming today. We're super excited to have you on our campus this fall. We know uh, it's coming up very quickly. Some of you are already booking your plane tickets and getting those plans ready. If you have any questions, um, I highly encourage you to reach out to us. Um, I know that uh, Pranay and Dr. Boylan and myself are all willing to take questions by email if there's something that you didn't have a chance to ask today. Um, I will make sure my contact information is in the chat box of this um, before we sign out. Also, um, our engineering program will be sending out a follow-up email after this is done uh, that has our contact information in it and a link to the recording of the session in case you want to go back to review it. Um, Pranay, thank you so much for joining us. We always really appreciate the student perspective um, on these sessions. Uh, that is what is the students are really most looking for. So thank you. And Dr. Boylan, thank you so much for your insight into the program. Um, students, we look forward to seeing you this fall. Um, let us know if you have any questions and thank you so much for joining us today. All right, thank you. Bye.